All right, I think we're all set. All right, uh, this is Dr. D.A. Waite speaking, the director of the Bible for Today here at 900 Park Avenue, Collingswood, New Jersey. And on the other end of the telephone line, I have uh, Mr. Victor Mischek, uh, and he's from Munster, Indiana. How do you spell your name, uh, Brother Mischek? Uh, it's M, uh, like in Nelly, uh -huh. N-I-S-C-H-I-K. I-K, and uh, you're living presently in Munster, Indiana, is that right? I do. Okay, I'd like to ask you what you might know concerning, uh, I know you've written your book. Uh, would you tell us about your book, first of all, what it's about and why you wrote it? Uh, I'll be happy to. Uh, the book uh, was basically an outgrowth of a uh, detailed diary that I kept uh, uh, for the uh, events that began to unfold in about 1984-85 when my uh, uh, mind got unscrambled regarding the, uh, uh, the Heil situation in mm -hmm. Germany. That's the ministry of Dr. Jack Hiles? Dr. Him? Jack Hiles, yes. What is the title of that book again? Uh, the book is called The Wizard of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was condensed to basically uh, uh, discuss my, my, my briefly my background, my involvement in the ministry of Jack Hiles and Hammond, and, uh, and then the entrapment into uh, into this cultish uh, mind control, which uh, 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 which basically uh, uh, got me uh, uh, involved quite deeply in the ministry, and uh, and then the uh, uh, the tragic uh, you know this dissolution of my marriage and an eventual confrontation and uh, and my departure from uh, from First Baptist of Hammond in 1988. 1988, that's basically what that is. Yes. For our listeners who perhaps are not uh, familiar with the book, how many years were you there at First Baptist of Hammond, and uh, then how many years were you working very, very closely with Pastor Jack uh, Hiles? Approximately? Uh, I was, um, uh, I met my wife uh, while I was in the, uh, in the armed forces in Kansas, and through a series of events we were married uh, in Hammond by Jack Hiles, and uh, I joined the church in 1961, uh, the uh, the year that I was married. And I stayed very active in the ministry of First Baptist Church through 1988. Mm -hmm. And what type of ministries did you have there? Were you just a, a I, tender, or were you I did just a worker, or what? I, I'm not an ordained minister. Mm -hmm. I, I did not go to Bible school, but... Uh, uh, I got involved uh, in in uh, teaching Sunday school at first, and from there I went to the bus ministry, in which I was for 24 and a half years. Mm -hmm. I was on the deacon board. I was the uh, choir director for nearly five years. Uh, I led the singing in uh, in the adults' uh, pa pastor's class, which is a Sunday school class prior to the morning service. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, probably the closest man uh, privately to Jack Hiles, and I did a lot of... Uh, financial and personnel uh, evaluations for him, uh, a lot of detailed background work. Um, I also uh, uh, was on the pastoral staff uh, for all those years, uh, working the altar, you know, dealing with the converts and, uh -huh. uh, and participating in the baptismal and the ordination services, you know. So I was, I was pretty deeply involved in the, uh -huh. whole, uh, the whole phase of the ministry. Now, you say uh, your background work for... Uh Pastor Jack House, what uh, what does that involve? The background work. Uh, it was uh, I, I I had a standing appointment with him every week, and we saw each other oh several times a week. I traveled with him. Uh, I did uh, a lot of uh, business related uh, work pertaining to evaluation of properties, uh, the acquisition of land, and. Uh, and things like uh, like a camp that the uh, church operated. Uh, I was involved in placement of uh, preacher boys from Hiles Anderson College into the ministry. I was involved in the evaluation and the investigation, background investigation of potential uh, employees uh, and workers in the Sunday School Department and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. uh, so I was sort of the eyes and the ears uh, of Jack Hiles in monitoring the uh, operations, you know, with this uh -huh. far-flung far uh, ministry. Did he have respect to you and confidence in you for those years that you were there, uh, well, sir, basically? I probably uh, uh, was the closest man to him, uh, uh, and uh, and I knew the uh, the inner workings of the church quite quite intimately. Uh -huh. 
So he would have confidence in you? He just wasn't uh, oh, yes. suspicious oh. of you through the years, et cetera, yes. et cetera? Yes. I was one of the few people that uh, I could call the church. Uh, and, of course, there is a reason for all this uh, closeness. Uh, what uh, is that reason? The reason is is that uh, I, had a, I had a problem uh, in my marriage because my wife, uh, 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 having been on staff all those years, uh, uh, got uh, emotionally and ultimately sexually involved with Jack Hiles. You say sexually involved, that included adultery as far yes. as... Yes, you have, I, uh, I categorically accuse him of adultery. You yes. have... Uh, 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 sort, what sort of uh, evidence do you have on that that you might uh, share with I our listeners? The, uh, being the husband of the wife and, uh, and also uh, uh, what my children and I saw and also from what Jack Hiles personally told me. He, uh, he basically admitted to me uh -huh. um, uh, as early as 1971 that he, uh, that he was emotionally involved with her. Uh, at the same time, he had no uh, relationship uh, of any sort uh, uh, with his own wife, Beverly, all those years. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, they, they slept apart. And, uh, and so uh, in, my, in my heart and mind, uh, I, uh, I have no doubt... Um, uh, just to illustrate the point, uh, in 1970, uh, uh, Jack Hiles took, a, took a, all the staff people on a uh, cruise uh, to the Caribbean, uh, husbands and wives, and uh, in those days, uh, my wife and I and Beverly Hiles and Jack Hiles were inseparable socially, a uh, foursome, we always were together. Uh -huh. And uh, on the cruise ship, uh, Jenny, my wife, was uh, uh, assigned the job of, uh, of tour director, and mm -hmm. after the uh, festivities and the dinners in the uh, in the uh, dining halls, uh, Jack and Beverly, uh, Jack and Jenny would uh, would retire to plan next day's activities, uh -huh. and I would not see my wife until the next morning. Uh -huh. And I found out in subsequent years that Beverly Hiles also did not see her husband until the next morning while uh -huh. on the cruise. So somewhere in the bowels of a big cruise ship, uh, those two uh, uh, managed to uh, spend evenings and nights together. And they, you don't believe that they were just going over books? No, I don't believe they yes. were going to, uh, uh, simply because my wife would do uh, all affection and all contact with me uh, um, uh, for all those years. At so about I, that time, about 1970 or something? Somewhere in there, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And... Uh, you, what was her, it was Jeannie's uh, job on the books at least, what has been her work there with uh, Jack? Is she still well, she employed by him now? Or? Yeah, initially when, when she was hired, um, she was hired part-time to, to do some work with the, uh, with the membership, uh, being a membership secretary. Uh -huh. And then uh, a few years later, she was, uh, she was assigned... Uh, uh, the job as, as director of uh, House Publication, and uh, she was moved to an adjacent office to Jack Hiles uh -huh. uh, with that uh, uh, dubious and notorious uh, secret door between their offices. Would you explain for our listeners uh, what that secret door entailed and how that structure was designed in his office and her office? Um, well, the office, Jack House's office, is in the corner of uh, the office complex. It's in, an, it's in the northeast corner. Uh, to the right of it is, uh, is Jenny's office, and to the left of it, uh, uh, at a 90-degree angle, is the office, uh, was the, office of, the original office of the church secretary. Uh -huh. When Jenny moved, and all these offices, uh, from the secretary's office to Jack House's office to Jenny's office, and from there to the receptionist's office, and there were there were several clusters of offices alongside each other. They were all interconnected uh -huh. with a door. Uh -huh. Well, when Jenny moved into her, they had an outside door and a connecting and a door. connecting door. I see. So uh -huh. there was an internal. Uh, there was a door to the to the hallway. Uh -huh. And also, each office was interconnected by a door uh -huh. all um, the way through the whole uh, uh, series of offices. I see. How how many offices would that have been, uh, roughly? Uh, I would guess probably uh, a string of about six or seven of them. Six or seven, okay. And so, when, when Jenny moved in, uh, the, the uh, connecting door between Jack Hiles and his secretary was permanently sealed. So, that... that 
that door was uh, uh, that, was closed. That is former secretary. That is correct. Uh, was permanently sealed. Permanently sealed. Also, Jenny's uh, door to the receptionist uh -huh. was sealed. I see. So no longer were these six or seven so interconnected. No longer were these uh, doors, six or seven uh, offices interconnected. Uh -huh. well, about what year would that have been? I uh, I, I venture to guess it was in the early 70s. Uh -huh. Did you see these sealed uh, doors? Is that a known thing in the it church? Was a known, it was a known f uh -huh. factor because I, I knew, uh, uh, for example, Sandy Plopper, who was his office, uh, his secretary. Sandy Plopper? Plopper, that's with a P. P-L-O? Yeah, P-L-O-P-P-E-R. -P -P I see. And, uh, she was a secretary? He, she was a secretary uh -huh. at the time, and when her door, direct door to the pastor was sealed, she no longer had direct access. Uh -huh. And not only that, but she was, from that day until she uh, resigned several years later, uh, she never set foot inside uh, Jack House's office. Uh -huh. She was permanently uh, uh, sealed from, uh, uh, kept from, from even physically entering. The only, the only communication she had with the pastor was, was him coming to her office and, uh, doing his, uh, correspondence and uh -huh. then, uh, uh, communicating by, uh, you know, by the intercom. I see. Did he lock his, uh, outside door usually or? Always. Uh, and so the one door, the one door that was between Jenny's office and, and the pastor's study was, was kept. But it was camouflaged. I see. How was it camouflaged? Okay, it was camouflaged two ways. His office was paneled. In other words, uh, dark uh, mahogany or walnut. I don't remember uh -huh. the exact grain yeah. of the paneling. His office was paneled, and uh, the contractor uh, who was doing it uh, was asked and told to put paneling and uh, over the over the door to make it look, there was a doorknob, but to make it look like there was one solid wall there. Uh-huh. And there was a picture hung on, on, the, on the door. From Jenny's side, there was a uh, drape that was uh, hung the full length of the wall. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I venture perhaps three or four feet away from the wall, and it covered the full length of her office. Uh-huh. And that drape concealed storage cabinets and file cabinets, and there was a safe there, but also concealed the door. Uh -huh. So that the average visitor to her office would not be aware that there was any connection between the two of them. Uh -huh. And, and of course, uh, the doors were, uh, bo both doors uh, to the outside, to the hallway, had deadbolts. And uh, um, Sandy Plopper... Uh, she stayed on for, I, I'm guessing, a few years, maybe three or four years after this arrangement. A little red light was connected to her telephone. Uh -huh. And when that little red light came on, uh, she was forbidden uh, to have any, uh, to make any contact with Jenny or with Jack Hiles. Huh. In other words, she could not buzz him on a telephone. She could not interfere uh, one time she told me that the president of the local bank came for a courtesy visit and, uh, and she broke the standing rule and buzzed him, uh, and, uh, never fully recovered from the wrath that she incurred, uh, for doing so. Huh. And, uh, so again, uh, when you have a man and a woman not married to each other with a private door, which is concealed, spending days on end together behind locked doors, uh, uh, I would say, uh, is, is rather positive proof that there was more than just professional, you know, uh, uh -huh. goings on. Were there windows in those outside doors by any chance? Uh, or glasses at all? Glass? No, the, no, no. These were solid doors. Solid doors. doors. Oh, no, there was no, there was no uh -huh. porthole. There was no, uh, uh, no way to uh, uh -huh. to see what was going on. So, how many hours a day did these two spend in this arrangement? Well, what would you uh, guess? Uh, on some days, they spent as many as eight to ten hours there behind closed doors. Uh -huh. And uh, and as long as the little red light stood, uh, you know, stayed lit on the telephone, uh -huh. um, the uh, 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 there was no 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 one was permitted. How long would you say uh, did uh, Mrs. Plopper estimate Sandy Plopper that uh, 
this, these would stay lit. Did she have any guess uh, that how many, at what, was it a matter of a few minutes, a uh, few, a quarter of an hour, half an hour, an hour, two hours, or, or what would you say would be a guess? Sometime, sometime that little light stayed on for the whole day. Is that right? Oh, yes. Uh, one incident happened that was so graphic in, in its in its bizarre arrangement is uh, my daughter Judy one time uh, had an accident on the playground and she broke her uh, broke her arm. Uh huh. And uh, and the teachers uh, and uh, uh, called the school, you know, to get Jenny to come and and give her medical assistance. And uh, they they could not get through for hours. And my daughter uh, sat in the in the nursing room with a broken arm for for possibly four or five hours, if not uh-huh. longer, uh, until until finally, uh, you know, uh, somebody was able to uh, to get Jenny's attention and get her out of the office and have her come and take care of her daughter's, uh, you know, uh, broken uh-huh. arm. So that's how uh, uh, secretive and how uh, uh, totally uh, uh, concealed uh-huh. that. Uh, that situation was. Has he ever admitted this arrangement in any publication or in any sermon at oh, all? Oh no, no. He he has denied uh, consistently that that door doesn't even exist. Uh huh. What uh, did they have any arrangements in either room? Uh, by the way, before I ask that, uh, did she also have this red light uh, privilege? In other words, when no. the red light was on, neither party, the, the secretary couldn't interrupt either party, buzz either group. Is that either the Jack Hiles or Jenny? I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I, see. I, I I doubt. I doubt that uh, that light was in Jenny's room. That I light see. was only in Sandy Plopper's office. Uh huh. But what I mean is, uh, when that light was on, I, I see what you mean. But she couldn't. What I meant to say, I may be phrased it wrong. Uh, she, Sandy Plopper, the secretary, could not uh, buzz or interrupt either Jenny or Jack Hiles. That is correct. I see. Okay. Now in the in the rooms, either the office, uh, Jenny's office, or uh, Jack Kyle's office, was there any Davenport bed, uh, sleeping accommodations that would make it simple to have sexual relations and adulterous relations, uh, as far as you know? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the furniture in the pastor's study uh, had uh, had living room furniture. Uh huh. Uh, for his counseling, there was a uh, a uh, rather uh, commodious uh, uh, couch and a uh, and a, and a uh, chair, and, and there was a television set and uh, a refrigerator and a little uh, dinette, uh, you know, uh, dinette area for, uh-huh. for fixing meals. So all the amenities of uh, of a home were there. Uh-huh. So this would be very simple to maintain sexual relations and adulterous relations on that. Uh, commodious couch. Well, uh, if that Dr. were the desire, Dr. Wade, it removed it removed the danger of having to check into a motel or anywhere for privacy. Uh, yes, the pastor study uh, served a purpose. Now, during this time, your relations with uh, your wife, uh, Mrs. Nistrick, Jenny, there had ceased, or had they were they continuing your sexual relations there? Mine. Yes. Uh, my sexual relationship with my wife ended in 1970, and that was at the contemporaneous with yes. the. Well, it was it was request on her part, uh, where she came to me and uh, um, and she told me that she was so uh, uh, involved and so deeply involved in the ministry that uh, that there was no room for uh, for any uh, marital. Um, so that was uh, on her part, and you've got to understand that we're dealing here with a David Koresh type mind control. Uh Jack Hiles came to me and in tears told me one day that, you know, that Jenny was just absolutely irreplaceable to him and that uh, that she was his inspiration. And then he confided in me several things of a rather personal nature. Uh, One was that because of the travels uh, around the country and the jet lag and everything else, that has rendered him impotent. Well, I found that to be a rather strange statement to come from from a pastor and unsolicited, uh, and I believe that was done to alleviate any anxieties that I might have that they had sexual relationship. Uh-huh. Do you believe he was lying uh, through uh, his teeth at that I have point? I no doubt in my mind that he was uh-huh. lying. Um, uh-huh. uh, he also told his wife the same thing to alleviate her anxiety. Uh-huh. And then also... And also- 
Okay, go ahead. And then also, Dr. Wade, he, uh, he, uh, put his arm around me and, and he had this knack of, of, uh, <laughs> being able to cry tears spontaneously. Uh huh. And he would cry and he would say, Vic, he said, you're the only man on God's earth that truly understands me because you're the only man that lives the way I do. I live in the basement, too. I don't have any relationship with my wife. I, I have odd hours, and I don't want to disturb her, so I have a room down the basement. And that made it, in my mind, thinking, you know, he used to always talk about this uh, uh, this Nazarite vow, you know, that, that was, uh, that was uh, the, old, the Old Testament as being a commitment to God's service, which precluded any pleasures of having, uh, you know, the companionship of a wife. Uh-huh. And so he brainwashed me into believing that in order to, uh, you know, to, to fully serve God, uh, he, uh, uh, you would have, you, you know, this abandonment of the, of the uh, uh, marital bed and, uh, and, and the relationship and the, uh, and the affection to a wife uh, was necessary to be set aside. Uh-huh. So he used himself as an example to convince me that what I was doing was doing God a big favor. Uh-huh. Uh, was Mrs. Hiles, uh, Beverly Hiles, uh, also a celibate for these years? In other words, did she, did she in any way corroborate to you that uh, the sexual relations between him and her ceased at a certain point in their lives? Have you been able to uh, talk with her or corroborate at all with uh, Mrs. Hiles on that? In 1985, Dr. Wade, uh, when uh, through a series of events that I have uh, rather extensively uh, written in in, uh, in my book, uh-huh. uh, God led me and forced me literally to take a job with the Moody Bible Institute. And uh, through a series of events, my eyes were opened. And in 1985, I uh, I was led to with the children safely out of the house. Uh, they were, incidentally, the main reason of my staying. I could not bring myself to turn them over into into uh, the ministry, but I, which I knew was flawed uh-huh. all along. Uh-huh. So in 1985, I uh, I confronted him. We had a big, stormy seven-hour standoff. Uh, how many hours? Seven hours. Seven hours in his office. In his office. With any red lights on well, the secretary's <laughs> phone or not? It was in the evening. So uh, uh-huh. uh, we started at 6.30, and uh, and we went almost till 1 o'clock in the morning, if not later. But it uh-huh. was just a lengthy standoff. And I basically demanded my wife back, and I basically demanded that the relationship cease. And, of course, he denied everything. And I told him that if he uh, in any way damaged or caused my, my, my marriage to be uh, um, uh, dissolved, I still wanted my wife back. I uh-huh. still wanted to, uh, uh, to, to try to establish a, a relationship, uh, however flawed it was. And I told him that uh, that uh, if he didn't cooperate, I was going to go and talk to Beverly Hiles, and I did that. Uh-huh. And that's when he uh, basically made that notorious statement to me that uh, if you want to have the same relationship with Beverly that I have with Janet, you have my permission. In other words, he basically offered his wife to me. Uh huh. To have sex, to have sex with you. That's oh yes, a, yes. Oh yes. He didn't care. Uh huh. Um, so how long did you talk to Beverly Hiles, his uh, wife? We talked for a number of Saturdays. I was, you know, we lived, our house was only three uh, uh, three houses away from the Hiles Parsonage. I uh-huh. lived right around the corner from them. Uh-huh. And I spent a number of Saturdays uh, in, in September and October of 1985 with her uh, in, in the living room, and we talked, and we uh-huh. talked extensively. Uh-huh. So I know firsthand that she had lived a celibate life, too. I see. Did she have any explanation for his actions? Did she also believe that there was adultery and sexual relations on his part with your wife? Did oh, yeah. Did she have any she, statement? Uh, she, knew, she knew about the relationship, and uh, she was quite uh, uh, quite concerned about it. And uh, uh, But uh, Beverly Hiles, uh, again, uh, Jack Hiles had an uncanny ability uh, to control people. Uh-huh. And the way he controlled her behavior was through fear of, uh, of possibly uh, uh, being consigned to, a, uh, to to an institution, and she was just scared to death of it, so she was afraid to uh, to do anything about the uh, uh-huh. about the bizarre situation. Now, what, uh, in other words, uh, to an insane asylum, would he have that power? Do you feel? And well, she she, uh, you know, with the money and with the. Uh, 
uh, with the power that he possessed, uh, you know, money will buy anything. All it takes is two doctors, isn't it? And all it takes is two doctors. And, mm -hmm. and there were a number of, uh, of doctors, and still are in the church there, that uh, that are totally loyal to him. Uh -huh. uh, so it wouldn't take much to, uh, you know, to be able to uh, to carry out the threat. Uh -huh. And that's that's how he uh, managed to control her. Over so the she's years. never gone public uh, with that. No, no, she never she never did. And to this day. Uh, neither Janie Nistrick nor Beverly Hiles has made uh, any has made no attempt to uh, uh, to deny the allegation or in any way make any comments about it. They've been they, they both have been totally silent on the whole on the whole debacle. And their silence does not necessarily mean that there has been no adultery on Jack Hiles and Jenny Nistrick's part. Is that correct? Well, the silence does not. Well, yeah, the silence. I, I've I, I've told uh, people around the country that uh, one way to, uh, uh, you know, to to remove any shadow of doubt that there was no adultery is for Jack, for Beverly Hiles and Jenny Nistrick to embrace each other and stand behind the pulpit and deny uh, that there was anything involved. Uh -huh. And neither one has done that. Uh -huh. In fact, both women have been totally uh, silent. They haven't they have had no communication with each other. They don't speak to each other, and they uh -huh. have no uh, no contact whatsoever. Uh -huh. Is this uh, public interview on our tape recorder here by phone uh, going to get Beverly Hiles in trouble, do you think? Uh, I don't think so. In other words, this is uh, something that you are testifying to, what you know. I, concerning... I'm testifying to what, what I know, and, and I, uh, uh, I have... Uh, uh, I have not been afraid of the truth, and uh, and Beverly Hiles' silence uh, uh, is uh, is very uh, damnable because she knows uh -huh. what he is, and she knows what has been going on between Beverly and Jack, uh -huh. and her silence has contributed to the to the uh, to the cover up. Uh -huh. Has, how long were these sessions that you visited with her and discussions and so on? Uh, you said it was in September and October on Saturdays, 1985, was it? Or just September? I forget the, I, what you uh, said. Dr. Wade, uh, my mind is hazy. Yeah, uh, but in that general general area. But I would say there were probably four or five, uh, uh, several telephone conversations, but I think there were about four or five lengthy face-to-face uh, -face meetings in, in, uh -huh. in her home. Uh -huh. Would you say how many hours it would be each of those four or five occasions? Oh, maybe maybe a dozen hours altogether. Is that right? A dozen altogether. Uh, in any of the conversations that you had with her during these dozen hours, uh, was there anything else that uh, you might be free to say to our listeners concerning what you found out concerning Jack Hiles' uh, habits, his background, his uh, sexual uh, uh, interests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, well, uh, a lot. What I know about Jack Hiles' is personal uh, sexual, uh, you know, appetites and whatever. Um, he has shared with me a lot over the years because I, we traveled together. We we go, went out for breakfast together, and he testified to all this. Uh, uh -huh. uh, this is a matter of, of deposition, so it's not. Uh, uh, this can be all substantiated. Uh -huh. I've spent countless of hours with him. And, and a lot of the uh, conversations, especially his uh, uh, his uh, marital and, and sexual counseling, is extremely explicit. In what way do you mean that? Uh, well, uh, to the point of uh, uh, to the point of counseling uh, with ladies uh, uh, about uh, about all you know about unusual uh, positions and unusual. Uh, uh, Means of of having sex, uh, including oral sex, uh, as and, well as yes, yes, including regular including uh, the, these things which are uh, which are not the normal uh, uh, sexual you know uh, 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 activity between a husband and a wife. In my case, uh, being a man, uh, he uh, he counseled, uh, he confided me a lot about how he made love to his wife. He very graphically described uh, his. Um, his, uh, you know, how he made love to his wife, and uh, and what his preferences were, and uh, and also, uh, uh, I also learned from there that uh, that they've had problems. Uh, well, I find it say... so I find it so ironic that in the uh, in the reply that Jack House wrote to the doc to the articles in the Biblical Evangelist, he made the statement uh, there that Jenny and I have had problems from from day one of our marriage. Uh -huh. uh, well, I happen to know that Jack House himself has had major problems uh, uh, from day one with his marriage. Uh 
Uh -huh. uh, he uh, he has acknowledged uh, that uh, on their honeymoon, <laughs> uh, they were taking a train out of Dallas, and uh, and uh, he only bought one ticket. Uh, in other words, he uh, he always made his wife feel uh, feel humiliated and neglected, and for for twenty years uh, in the seventies and the eighties. Beverly House was an unknown commodity at the church. She was never acknowledged publicly. She was never referred to in a, in a sermon. She was like a non-person, uh -huh. and so she was totally neglected. And uh, well, you, how did she get to Dallas or out of Dallas? Did you get uh, another ticket at the last minute? Or a, a good question. They might, yeah, but it was one of those humiliating things. She just bride. was left behind, or what? Well, I don't know. You don't know the details. I don't know. I, a lot of things Jack Hiles did on purpose. And I wonder sometimes if it wasn't just to humiliate her and to and to beat her into submission, because uh, Beverly Hiles is was at one time, you know, a free spirit and sort of a had a personality of her own. But uh -huh. in recent years, she has been uh, uh, beaten into total submission, and she is now totally under his uh, under his control. Uh -huh. Now you say problems from day one. Uh any other problems that you know about in his honeymoon situation? Well, I, uh, might, I, I know uh, I know of some things that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that they have had arguments over uh, over how to have sex and whatever. And there's some things that she uh, she just didn't feel uh, uh, led to uh, to submit to. So, uh, what sort of uh, sexual demands uh, again, did he make again, upon her? I uh, I. Uh, uh, I respectfully would just, uh, you know, just in general on the public, I would, yeah. I would defer from that. From yes. Any comments, but I will let the the, the listener uh, draw his own conclusions, and I think any uh, anybody uh, can uh, can make uh, can make some rational conclusions. But there were difficulties. Uh, Where do you suppose he got these uh, strange and bizarre requests and desires, etc., on his in regard to his pride? Well, again, uh, I we can go to. Uh, the the one uh, the one uh, source uh, that is probably the most uh, reliable on all this is uh, are his own sermons. Uh huh. And uh, I know, for example, you know he uh, he talks forever about uh, um, driving through and parking uh, in the red light district in Dallas. Huh. And, he says uh, about that. What is he uh, doing in the red light district? Well, he claims to be to have been going to uh, to visit somebody in the in the Baylor Hospital, uh -huh. and uh, and I also uh, you know he was in the service. He was with the uh, with the uh, paratroopers, and uh, and uh, I also know that that he uh, 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 he has admitted from uh, uh, from the pulpit, and it's a matter of record that he has read. Uh, magazines like Sexology magazine, and he had people uh, give him certain copies of, of Playboy magazine for one thing or another. And so I believe that uh, and this is this is this is uh, quoting from his sermons uh, uh -huh. uh, that he uh, uh, that he has indeed uh, uh, been involved with, uh, with pornographic material. Uh -huh. Has this pornographic material do you think influencing him influenced him in other ways in addition to uh, merely uh, his own marriage, or beginning his marriage. How long has he? Do you think he has been influenced by this pornography? Well, if you uh, know, probably it. all his life, because he was—he's always been a loner. Uh -huh. uh, he fits the profile of uh, of a man who travels a lot, spends countless of hours, you know, in a motel room, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and not having a uh, a, a uh, um, normal uh, relationship with his spouse. Uh, and uh, I happen, for example, I, I happen to know that you know his television set in in his uh, in his study is is wired for cable. So, uh, so I know that uh, that he has uh, the availability, uh -huh. and not just the normal cable, but also the uh, that is correct uh, HBO and whatever you call those other sex yeah, cable all, stuff. Yeah, all those, uh, all those uh, the filthy uh, stuff. Yeah, whatever. Not just the uh, cable TV yeah. and. Uh, Cable news and all. Yes, and 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 what gives me uh, suspicion uh, that he was deeply involved in this thing is is the uh, is the uh, uh, bizarre and the depraved way that he counseled uh, uh, people with marital problems. Uh -huh. uh, one of his one of his uh, you know he was uh, extremely uh, 
uh, talked a lot from the pulpit about incest. He talked about it being a horrible sin. He talked about, uh, you know, uh, about uh, how, how fathers uh, uh, drilled holes in the in the walls of their bedroom to 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 view their daughters dressing and undressing, and that gave that gave people, you know, uh, the uh, 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 the ideas on how to uh, how to uh, get into this kind of a bizarre behavior. Uh-huh. Uh, he uh, he had some very strange, uh, and I was with him uh, on on uh, on the wedding day of his of his daughters when he would talk about uh, graphically to me about uh, um, what that young man is going to do to their daughter. Well, you know, this is your own flesh and blood, and I and I always thought it was rather uh, bizarre that a father would graphically discuss not only his own personal sex life but uh, that of his uh, of his uh, children. How many daughters does he have? Uh, he has three daughters. I see. So a behavior like that uh, you know, is um, and and I've talked to a number number of ladies that have had failed marriages and, mm-hmm. and I know the uh the very sensuous and the very uh seductive and the very uh uh graphic uh, way that uh, that Jack Hiles uh uh, dealt with marriage problems, and the solutions to it were uh, were straight out of uh, you know out of Sexology magazine or something uh-huh. similar to that. What what are the names of his daughters? And I think does he have one son. Uh, he has one son, Dave, and he has three daughters: Becky, Linda, and Cindy. Becky, Linda, and Cindy. How old would uh, each of those be presently? If you know, uh, Doctor Wade, I would I would not venture to guess. You know, uh, they were all Jack House came here in '58. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cindy was. Uh, 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 was uh, well, Beverly was carrying Cindy when they came here. She uh-huh. was born in Indiana, so she was born probably at 59. So that makes her uh, uh, 60, 90, 30, uh, 34 years old. Uh-huh. And, uh, I think Becky, the oldest one, is probably uh, approaching uh, uh, approaching uh, late 40s. Uh-huh. She's the oldest one, and Dave must be about 42, and Linda is in there somewhere. But I, uh-huh. I uh, remember yeah, just case. a general. Idea. So they're uh, they're right now presently very mature. And, oh yes, and so on. Oh yes. So uh, the uh, family, what has been their uh, their fruit or their their uh, the fruitage of Jack Hiles' uh, family? We, you've described somewhat of his wife, a control, and so on. I know. Do you know something of David's? Uh, life. Uh, he's been caught in yes. many different things. Would you just describe to our listeners something well, of David and then maybe again, go from there? Uh, the, the sad thing about Jack Hiles' ministry is is the uh, the pain and the suffering that his children have uh, and the grief yes. and uh, and the immorality that has permeated his own family. Uh, before you go into the situation with Dave Hiles, uh, you mentioned that many times he would uh, uh, go ahead in the pulpit and talk about how horrible uh, incest is, et cetera, et cetera, fathers in relation to their daughters. Uh, do you feel that he himself has been has committed incest with any of his uh, daughters of any kind? Uh, I have, I have, uh, I have no no definite proof. Uh, mm-hmm. But there are some things that uh, uh, that having been so close to the family, um, I know I know that there are some a lot of questions that uh, that uh, that are. That remain unanswered, uh-huh. and uh, I know, I know at 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 least I know that the children have been uh, uh, neglected uh, uh-huh. by their father. They, Dave, uh, Dave uh, had n- hardly any time with his dad. His dad never came one time to see him play in any of the high school basketball games. Uh-huh. Uh, I saw Dave Hiles uh, shoot baskets for hours at the. Uh, at the house, walked the streets at night, and he was he was a very lonely and a very uh, uh, lonely uh, young man, uh, reaching out for his dad, and his dad just didn't have any time for him. Uh-huh. And uh, so when he went on staff, he uh, he basically tried to keep stride for stride with his dad. He tried to build the biggest youth ministry, and he got into publications, and he started traveling, and he started promoting youth uh, conferences and whatever. Uh-huh. And he started writing books and 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 and, and selling tapes and everything. And uh, in this great sincere desire to try to please his dad, he just burned out. Uh-huh. 
When did his uh, adultery and fornication and sexual uh, episodes begin, Dave well, Hiles? They began uh, at age 14. Age 14. And again, it was for attention, and it was for uh, it was a uh, it was a, uh, a lonely boy. And I I have a lot of compassion for Dave uh -huh. because I uh, uh, he was with me on the bus route, and I employed him when he was a teenager. I was in in, in computers, and he did some. Uh, uh, computer work for me, and he was a very diligent worker, but he was a very lonely boy. Uh -huh. And um, and uh, the family, uh, so so David basically uh, went into sin uh, in, in junior high school. And uh, what, uh, with just one individual or several or scores of oh, the my, girls, or what oh, would you idea. estimate? <laughs> the membership of First Baptist Church is dotted, is dotted with uh, with. Uh, uh, Daughters of our families that have been sexually violated over the years. I mean, there's just no count. By, no by David Hiles, by Jackson. David Hiles. Hmm. Would you have a rough estimate? Would it be in the tens, the twenties, the thirties? I mean, what rough? Dr. Wade, it will be in the hundreds. In the hundreds? I have no question about it. My, my. Now, did Jack Hiles, the father, know of this? Was it he ever brought to his it. attention? He knew about it, and people will tell you. They would people would bring evidence in. He would take the evidence and take it, tell him I tell you that he'd take care of it, and uh, and he would not. I've gone to him countless times, uh, warning him about his son, and he would his comment would be, "Well, boys will be boys, and uh, uh, I appreciate you telling me. Just just keep telling. He can give me the information and whatever, and uh, and I'll take care of it." And uh, he never did. Uh huh. And simply because uh, the Hiles children all knew, and uh, uh, Dr. Sumner, in one of his articles recently in the Biblical Evangelist, made reference to the fact that one of his daughters confirmed that the uh, accuracy of the uh, Sumner articles and uh, in my book and and Boyle Glover's Fundamental Seduction were basically essentially correct. Huh. Which daughter would that have been? If you sure. recall, which daughter would that have been? If you recall, I, I, I or didn't he mention the daughter? Mention. I, oh, I, I see. I know who she is, but yeah. I need to better not. Yeah. Piece. Okay. Well, that's, you don't have to answer any more than you want because this yeah. is a public uh, discussion and <laughs> interview. I have certain things, and I feel, right. uh, and may I say for the record, that I have nothing but but love and compassion for the Hiles children. Yes. I, now, I was the legal guardian, uh, assigned guardian, in case something happened to, uh, to Dr. and Mrs. Hiles. So mm -hmm. I knew the children very, very well, all of them. Mm -hmm. Now, have any of the girls gone into sexual immorality, for fornication, adultery, sin of that kind, or just Dave? Uh, well, uh, basically, no, uh, there's been uh, the the only one that's that's definite. Uh, Becky, the oldest one, has a husband who. Uh, who has a proven track record of adultery. Uh. I don't know. Uh, uh, Becky is the oldest one, and she was gone uh, uh, for a number of years, so I do not know. But Linda is uh, uh, was married to Johnny Murphy, and uh, and Linda, uh, through, a, through a series of events that I discussed uh, uh, several years ago in, uh, in a meeting, uh, um, uh, got involved with... Uh, uh, with a certain gentleman, and uh, and she's divorced now from Johnny, and uh, she is uh, currently, I believe, uh, employed by uh, uh, by Liberty University and Dr. Jerry Falwell in Lynchburg. I see, I see. And Cindy, the youngest one, is uh, is married to Jack Scott, who is uh, one of the uh, uh, vice presidents of Hiles Anderson College, and she's the only one that, that currently lives in in this area. Uh -huh. And. Uh, uh, all all children have had difficulties. Uh -huh. uh, I, uh, uh, I that, that's all I'm going to say. They, sure. They've had some adjustments that yes. uh, that were difficult, to, you know. So, uh, but but officially and for the record, uh, Dave Hiles uh, is in his second marriage, and Linda is divorced from from her husband Johnny Murphy. Oh, I see. Now, uh, the second marriage of Jack Hiles' son David Hiles, uh, I have been told has has been uh, not too savory from the sexual standpoint. Is it true that you found out their advertisements in various sex journals and magazines, et cetera? Well, and if so, would you tell our listeners what you know about that situation? Okay, Brenda, uh, Brenda, Dave Hiles, uh, when, when his troubles became too uh, obvious in Hammond, uh, his daddy shipped him out to a former pastorate in Garland, the Miller Road Baptist Church. What was it, Miller Road? Miller Road, back yes, uh -huh. in Garland, Texas. This uh -huh. is the church from which Jack Hiles came to Hammond. Uh -huh. So his son uh, took over the ministry in the uh, in the eighties, and uh, and Brenda 
uh, and her husband were school teachers for the Christian school at, at Miller Road Baptist Church. Uh-huh. And uh, it didn't take long for Dave Hiles to get involved uh, with, with as many as 14 or 15 women, according to Paula, uh, his, his first wife. Uh-huh. And one of them was Brenda, and so... Uh, uh, the, the marriage, uh, the first uh, union was uh, was uh, was separated, and uh, his first wife's name was what? Paula. Paula, yes. Uh-huh. And um, and so he uh, cohabitated with Brenda. In fact, he came uh, when he was booted out of uh, out of Garland uh, for for his sexual escapades. He came back to to Hammond, Indiana, and and he lived and cohabitated with his uh, uh, with his Brenda woman, and eventually married her. Uh-huh. And there, there, she had two children uh, from her previous marriage, and uh, I think they have one or two children now. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, is one of the children uh, from her previous marriage uh, died? Uh, died under questionable very, circumstances. That is correct. Maybe uh, some have thought that he beat him to death. Is that uh, well, what? Uh, it's in brother a matter of. Uh, Boyle Glover's uh, depiction of that is that yes. a possible inference? And also, and also, it's quite extensively covered in a documentary uh, of television series that was run uh, on a Detroit television station. Uh-huh. And uh, the boy died of mysterious circumstances, and it's an open case uh, of, of a homicide that uh, 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 that uh, the investigator for the Illinois Department of Family uh, and Children and Family Services maintains is is a is a definite murder case, uh-huh. and and that was made a state of publicly. So uh-huh. so there's been uh, there's been uh, the children have been abused. So they are still together now. Yes, what yes. is their uh, their connection with this pornography or whatever well, you call while it? While here, while here uh, in Hammond, uh, uh, Dave got into the insurance business uh, and he would sell uh, annuity policies and that sort of thing. Uh, for, for one of the uh, insurance companies, and one way, uh, and his uh, sales force was essentially recruited from uh, from within the uh, student body of Hiles Anderson College. Uh-huh. And and I have heard story after story after story that uh, uh, one way to entrapment would be to uh, to invite them socially, uh, uh, and, uh, and in the process of time, uh, end up you know with swapping husbands and wives and and and. and uh, Brenda performing certain sexual favors on on prospective salesmen. Uh, would that would that include uh, oral sex? That would include it all. Yes, yes, all of it, all of it. Mm-hmm. And from that, it evolved into uh, into uh, this uh, this uh, horrible uh, sin of of, uh, of uh, advertising uh, each other. You know, uh, with with full view of all the merchandise in these swinger ma- magazines. For in other words, complete naked. Poses and so on. Absolute total nakedness. Uh-huh. Uh, all, uh, all and Brenda's the, picture was in those porno and magazines. Brenda's picture was in numerous times. And uh, what it was is that uh, some uh, some of the uh, husbands of these uh, violated women that uh, that uh, that happened during this uh, uh, activity with this insurance company uh, took time to uh, to investigate some of these swinger magazines, and uh, and uh, they were found to be in, in, in national publications and also. In, in local publications where they would advertise where uh, where Brenda's uh, merchandise was all basically on display uh, uh-huh. and, uh, and did they get paid for this do you know or well I I don't know how these people operate I think probably yeah. it was just for just for sport you know uh-huh. they would invite couples of like preferences you know to have discreet kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, liaison with uh-huh. each other and, and were so, Dave's picture also pictures uh, there not well, just, just Brenda uh, some uh, uh, yes, there was one that uh, that uh, that uh, he never showed his face. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But other certain body parts were uh, were uh, uh, displayed. Uh, uh, allegedly, they were his. But, uh-huh. but basically, it was Brenda's picture. But in all uh-huh. these uh, ads that accompanied these things, uh, it, it always made reference to the the husband and the wife. So it was it was both uh, both spouses were uh-huh. were involved in this uh, in this sort of sordid behavior. Uh-huh. And so this thing was uncovered, and to make a long story short, it, it, uh, uh, it, uh, in 1991, during pastor school, uh, there was a uh, story that was leaked purposely that, uh, that Boyle Glover and I and uh, others have, uh, printed these pictures in, in booklet form, and we were going to distribute them to, uh, to the delegates of the pastor school, and Jack Hiles came out, 
when he heard it, he panicked, and in the Sunday sermon basically admitted that his son was a total reprobate and shipped him out of town. And uh, Dave Howells is currently employed by the uh, uh, Christian Law Association and, and Dr. David Gibbs. And Why on earth would they employ that monster? Well, because, uh, uh, Dr. Wade, because birds of a feather flock together. Uh, there's some, there's some uh, business or other uh, inseparable relationship between Jack Hiles and, and David Gibbs, uh, which, uh, which gives rise to a suspicion that there may be something more than just... Uh, uh, a, a uh, you know a legal uh, <laughs> uh, lawyer and uh, 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 relationship. You mean could this be uh, homosexual conduct? You mean or Dr. could it be Wade, fellow I adulterers? Don't or? I don't. You know. don't know. I could not even begin to yeah. venture. Uh, the fundamentalist movement today is into pedophile behavior with children, so that has already uh, gone beyond uh, Romans chapter one and homosexuality. It's, it's gone beyond homosexuality. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's behavior that's not even listed by Paul in the first uh, chapter of Romans, so uh -huh. I would not begin to guess. Uh -huh. uh, but but uh, the, the fact is, is that David Hiles is working now for, the, for Dr. David Gibbs, and, uh, and uh, from what my sources tell me, the, uh, uh, the sexual activity and these uh, Swinger uh, you know, magazine uh, advertisements have gone right on. There's been no let up, even though he's working for this that's Christian law. Sources tell me. Sources tell you. Even though uh, in a recent sermon, Jack Hiles in tears uh, uh, told his people that, uh, that David Gibbs had told him that uh, David has done so well spiritually that on a scale of one to ten, he's a twelve. Oh my! So that's that's a matter of public utterances. Yes. Now, the one of the charges that Jack Hiles made. Uh, against you, if you recall, was that you were uh, an adulterer or almost close to that with some other woman in the church. What uh, brought him to uh, bring this charge up to you? I believe that was in the TV thing that he had a little squib. I forget the well, place. Uh, Dr. Wade, uh, the, only, the, only, uh, the only defense that Jack Hiles uh, had is to, uh, is to uh, tarnish my reputation. Uh -huh. and, and to make it a uh, his word versus my word kind of a, uh, uh -huh. a situation. And, of course, I'm a little nobody, and he's a great leader uh, on whose shoulders all fundamentalism rests. Uh -huh. According so, to him, anyway. So he set out, he set out to uh, totally uh, uh, shred my, my character, and uh, I was accused of, uh, of uh, wanting to run off with a woman and wanting to... Uh, um, uh, you know, to, uh, that I entertained some beautiful lady in, in, in my house and that, uh, and that I had all these questionable behaviors, you know, in places uh -huh. that I worked and also, you know, quite explicitly that I was, uh, that I was, uh, homosexual. So uh -huh. apparently he, he, uh, he basically accused me of being, of being a bisexual. Uh -huh. And, uh, unfortunately for him, uh, none of these, uh, he did not come up with one tangible, uh, witness uh -huh. to all these allegations. What woman's name did he mention uh, that you were supposed to be romantically uh, involved with? Did he mention uh, any he names? He did not mention anybody's name. No names at all? No names at all. Just innuendo? Just innuendos, and also he, he, he claimed uh, <coughs> early when, in 1989 when the Sumner articles came out, he, uh, he boasted that he could uh, bring this, this lady that I was allegedly uh, to, wanted to run off with. Uh -huh. And... Um, and uh, and she would testify. Well, he never brought her forth. Uh -huh. uh, but what is not known uh, is that uh, the lady was contacted, and this lady lives in this area. And I and this and this could be uh, substantiated by by a simple telephone call. This woman was contacted. She she moved to Tennessee, and she was she was a lady that worked for me, a single lady, and. Um, and Jack Howells tracked her down in 1989 when the Sumner articles came out and, uh, and, and, and gave her an offer of total financial security for the rest of her life if she would come to First Baptist Church and testify falsely against me from behind the pulpit. And she refused to do that. Can her name be uh, made public? Uh, I, I prefer not to unless I would get her permission. I see. All right. Uh, I have uh, I have referred to her in my book by the initials, 
Uh, this story can be substantiated by uh, by Attorney Glover because uh-huh. he uh, he has uh, he has uh, talked to the lady. Uh-huh. She was subsequently she moved back to this area and uh, and she has been approached uh, a number of occasions to again come before uh, the member the the uh, congregation of First Baptist Church and testify against me, but she she refused to do that. Uh-huh. And uh, what uh, was she supposed to accuse you of adultery? Well, or? basically, the allegation that that, that we had a, that we had an adulterous affair and that uh, and that w- that we were going to run off. I see. Well, the truth is, uh, Doctor Wade, is that uh, Jack Hiles had the woman in his office and counseled her, uh-huh. and, and and pleaded with her to become my mistress because my marriage had fallen apart and and become that uh, uh, his biblical. Uh, his biblical examples of, of, of this kind of relationship was uh, uh, was Barak and Deborah in the Book of Judges, uh-huh. and uh, and uh, so and also of course the uh, the uh, David Jonathan kind of a relationship. In other words, that close friendship. Uh-huh. And so he pleaded with her uh, to uh, uh, you know to uh, to seduce me or to sleep with me to uh-huh. uh, you know to. Uh, 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 because he was working, you know, feverishly to uh, uh, to get me involved with somebody else. Because by then, uh, his own relationship with my wife was uh, was uh, you know uh-huh. this, full blast. Have you have you ever talked to this woman recently? I've or? talked to her on a number of occasions. Uh-huh. I've talked to her face to face. Uh-huh. And what does she say? What is her attitude towards you? Does she? Well, she uh, she's my friend. Uh-huh. She uh, she left shortly. She was totally devastated, and she uh, and she left. And what the sweetest thing to me. Uh, was uh, uh, was that she in tears? She said she she did not understand what was going on. She said I I, I could not understand what Jack House would force and, and try to force me into into adulterous affair. Was she married at the time? No, she's never been married. Never been married. No. Uh, how, about how old a lady is she? Uh, she's probably now in her early forties. Uh huh. And uh, she told me, and this is this is so sweet. And I and I and, I, and how old are you, by the way? Uh, I'm in my late fifties. Uh huh. Late fifties. Okay. Go ahead. And, uh, she said what now? One of the sweetest things that came out of the conversation that in tears, you know, she uh, uh, she said to me that, uh, she said, that knowing what she knows now and having read my book and having read uh, all the material, she said I, she wishes now that she would have just stayed at my side, you know, uh-huh. in a sweet Christian way, you know. There was never any anything between us. Uh-huh. And, 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 and for the record, Dr. Wade, I have challenged countless preachers around the country uh, to put me on the polygraph. Uh-huh. I never, I never, uh, you just wire me. I, uh-huh. I'd be happy, uh, uh, with one exception now, since the, uh, since the reply that Dr. Hiles shredded my character, I, I insist that, uh, if I take a polygraph test, the Jack Hiles take one too. Uh-huh. Simply because he's, he, he dumped on me all these allegations. Uh-huh. And I would insist that. In other words, you'd take a polygraph if he would too. Both, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would be, I Mutual be, polygraph test. Yes. I would be happy to do it. Now, you said in your book you referred to the lady by initials. What initials do you refer uh, to? J.L. J.L. Are those are real ones or yes. false? Mm-hmm. Those are real. Uh-huh. Real initials. Uh, we're getting to the end of our first side of our interview tape, for one hour. It's now been 58 or 59 minutes. Would you pause, uh, Brother Nistic, while I turn the tape over? Sure. Okay, just let me do that. Okay, uh, this is the continuation of the interview with uh, Mr. Vic Nischik, uh who is in Munster, Indiana, and I am the Dr. D.A. Waite, Director of the Bible for Today here at 900 Park Avenue, Collingswood, New Jersey. And uh, right now, uh, the time is 10.10 uh, 10 p.m., uh, the 19th of June, Saturday evening, 1993. And we're talking uh, about the situation with Jack Hiles and uh, Vic Nistrick's relationship with him over the many years. All right, uh, Brother Vic, would you please uh, tell our listeners uh, something concerning the subject you mentioned earlier about the pro- proliferation of pedophile activity among the fundamentalists and uh, pastors and preachers and others, individuals in our Christian churches? What evidence do you have in regard to that subject and theme? Well, uh, it's quite a shocking uh, again, theme. Again, Dr. Wade, we're, we're dealing with a, uh, uh, and, uh, God in His mercy, uh, has, uh, given the believers of our nation ample warning of these, uh, of these plagues that are coming. And the 
most graphic one that happened in the last uh, several weeks is the David Koresh situation. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, where, uh, where children have been uh, prepared for uh, being the brides of David Koresh, where uh, men uh, were loyal, fiercely loyal to him and died for him and uh, were required by David Koresh to live a celibate life. Uh, while while uh, David Koresh slept with the wives and, and impregnated them and and, and, and and they bore children his children for him uh-huh. uh, the whole what this basically is is an, is an example of is the is the cultish mind control uh-huh. and this is something that the believers uh, in you know in America and, and the, the general public has a difficult time understanding because uh, uh, this being a free a democratic society with freedoms and liberties that are guaranteed by the Constitution, uh, people find it incomprehensible that there would be uh, mind control exercise in America, but there is. Uh-huh. Do you think Jack Hiles is a, a partisan? Uh, controller in this and Jack Hiles is the ultimate he is the uh, he is the guru he is the mastermind of this uh, mind control and this uh, uh, and this uh, uh, tightly secretive uh, uh, cultish mentality that exists uh, you have to understand Dr. Wade that for 30 years he uh, Jack Hiles conducted pastor school uh-huh. and many of the uh, uh, men that have been discredited in in the ministry, uh, namely the Jimmy Swaggers and the Jimmy Bakers, uh-huh. and uh, people of uh, uh, of, uh, of that caliber, uh, the the Jerry Falwells uh, uh, and the uh, and all the other great leaders of of this nation, in and out of the Baptist uh, uh, denominational uh, you know, association, have come to pastor school. Huh. And have seen in pastor school where Jack Howells paraded little teenage girls and and uh, and showed them off to the men and saying, "Wouldn't you like to touch these beautiful bodies?" Huh. And 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 created an atmosphere of lust uh, towards uh, uh, towards the children. Uh, this is this is very graphically. Uh, Discussed in the uh, in the documentary that came out of out of the series of television programs in Michigan. Uh-huh. Uh, so, are you were, are you able to send that documentary to us here at the Bible for Today? Uh, I, I put in the mail today, Doctor Wade. Excellent. Uh, we're able to share this with our friends and You're people. You're certainly free to do whatever you want to. Uh, uh-huh. I would just ask that uh, <laughs> that you return the copy because it's a loaner than yes, sir. I would be right, but I, I'm able to copy it and return You're the free to do return the you okay. Want to do it. There's no copyright. Uh, uh-huh. In fact, uh, in fact, the, uh, the the people have encouraged that this be distributed as widely as possible. We certainly will do our very best. Uh, would you say it was an acceptably done uh, documentary? It was. Uh, it was a very well documented and with with uh, with an ample number of witnesses, and uh, and very professionally done. And uh, and like like in so many other ways. Uh, the, the one witness that uh, that indicted Jack Hiles more than any other witness is Jack Hiles himself, uh-huh. with his big mouth. Uh-huh. So, uh, so anyhow, this uh, would this be libelous, slanderous? Uh, what uh, any attorney's opinions about it at all? Well, what uh, was the radio st- or TV station that I aired it in Detroit? Uh, yeah, it was aired in Detroit, Doctor Wade, and uh, and uh, the thing that you've got to understand about Jack Hiles, he has intimidated a lot of people. He has intimidated uh, the networks from, from, from running this series uh-huh. with the fear of a lawsuit. But, but what people don't realize is that Jack Hiles will never sue anybody for libel. Why is that? Uh, because he has more, <laughs> he has, uh, he has a, skele- a closet full of skeletons. Uh-huh. And, uh, and in a, in a lawsuit, uh, the defense attorney has every right and every opportunity to do a discovery and to subpoena any records or anything uh-huh. that uh, that uh, might be, uh, you know, uh, and you know, uh, uh, so uh, germane and pertinent to the case. So yes, anything pertaining to you know telephone calls and financial records and that sort of thing. And uh, and uh, if anybody, uh, uh, if there would have been a lawsuit. Uh, it would have been uh, against Dr. Sumner or against me and the allegations that I have made. Uh, or maybe Royal Glover, perhaps. Royal Glover yes. and others. But, but He's I an attorney. That. He's an attorney himself, and I guess yes. he wasn't worried about that. Yes, and, and, the people, and the people in Michigan, uh, 
uh, the, the attorneys, uh, uh, you know, were given the material. And now, which attorneys now? The, the station? For, for the station. Uh-huh. Which station was that again? WJBK. WJB is in boy? Yes. K, okay. Well, that's up out of uh, Detroit. CBS affiliate in Detroit, Michigan. CBS. Do you know whether any other CBS stations carried it? Uh, it was carried by, uh, by, by satellite and a lot of independent, as uh, a number of independent networks carried it. That was the once a week for six days, or once yes, a day, or what? Yes. What? It was the during, it was the special, uh, the lead story and the, uh, on the, uh, evening newscast. Uh-huh. For six days in a row? For six days in a row, yes. Sir. Uh-huh. It's, it's a little bit, I, I, I think it's about an hour, a little bit more, uh, in duration, how uh-huh. the segments put together. Now, what uh, is the nature of this? Is basically the pedophile activity the of pedophile fundamentalists? Activity. Uh, there are several, there, there, and it all begins uh, basically. Um, one of the things that uh, that I have been uh, um, uh, been trying to get the uh, the Christian community to 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 be made aware of is that uh, Jack House's ministry has enough truth and enough uh, sincerity. To make it credible, uh-huh. and one of the ministries that has been the most successful is the bus ministry. Uh-huh. And the bus ministry is great if it's if it's done right, but it is a uh, an open uh, license for anything imaginable because because you uh, you go into homes uh, and these are mostly you know the neighborhoods are mostly poor, uh-huh. and the children are very vulnerable. They come from broken homes and and very vulnerable for affection. Uh, for years, ever since, for all my 24 and a half years in the bus ministry, we were always encouraged to be the uh, surrogate parent, to show love and show affection and, 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 uh, and give hugs and kisses and, uh, and, uh, and, and show love, uh, to, to these children. Uh-huh. And uh, when you have a, uh, a, a society which, which suppresses outwardly any form of sexual, uh, behavior, among young people, where it's made to be to be dirty, and you have all these stupid rules that have been heaped on on top of rules to restrict any kind of uh, uh, bodily contact among teenagers, uh, uh-huh. and you know, in the church and in the schools and in the college, uh, riding closely, uh, tightly packed buses with bodies uh, close to each other, and uh, and with uh, with uh, teenagers and uh, and uh, and uh, children in their adolescence rubbing bodies against each other for for, for some time as long as two or three hours uh, on a given Sunday, it, it opens up a can of worms of of, of behavior. And there's uh-huh. been constant constant stream of uh, allegations of uh, fondling and an accidental touching of of of, uh, of children. Uh, uh, that uh, that has permeated, and there was never, never, any time given uh, for these workers to have any restraint or show any propriety. Uh, we were encouraged uh, uh, in our bus workers meetings, you know, to uh, uh, to to give sugar to these little kids and to kiss them and to hug them and to and to and, and to develop a close bodily contact. And again, it was all outwardly cloaked in sincerity and you know showing love and affection but uh, but for young men uh, primarily and sometimes young women that that have had their sexuality uh, repressed uh, this gave uh, this gave them a ready uh, you know a, a ready available source of uh, you know of, 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 of young people and children uh-huh. to fondle and to play with and to and to sexually and get sexual arousal from. Uh-huh. Now, you said that when Jack Kyle's on the pastor of schools uh, parades these teenagers and so on up there, wouldn't you like to touch their body? Do you feel, the, is it possible that he has had uh, pedophile activity down through his life and well, ministry with it, the pornography it, that he's been really, reading? It really reveals the mind of the man. Uh-huh. And uh, on the on the tape that I'm sending, you, you you will hear his own voice. He uh, he tries to defend himself by saying, "Well, I'm too old for that." Well, you're not too old for that. You uh-huh. know, he always tried to. How old is Jack Hiles? Uh, he is uh, 67 now. Uh-huh. But again, there was always this uh, this uh, uh, even from the pulpit this constant reminder of the the sacred parts, and you know the. 
the bodies of the little girls, you know, you, you know, you, you, we're now the temple of the Holy Spirit, and uh, and I'm just praying that, like the uh, the high priest of old, uh, that was the only man that could come into the temple. I pray that only one man will come into the bodies of these uh, of these young girls. Huh. There was that constant, constant sexual innuendo, and uh, and and again, you have to understand. The, the purpose for all this is is that Jack Howells himself has a polluted mind. Uh-huh. And not only that, but he encourages sexual, uh, you know, downfall from preachers and from his own members. Encourages sexual downfall in oh, what way? Oh, yes. In what way? Because, Dr. Way, for several reasons. Number one is is that he can then jump and be the, the knight, uh, you know, on a shining armor, riding on a white horse, coming to the rescue of the fallen sinner. Uh-huh. But not only that, but secondly, uh, he encourages, and I know in my case, when he was trying to, uh, uh, at one time, to, uh, to uh, convince me that I, was, that I had homosexual tendencies, he would pry uh, all the way to my childhood, and, and, and ask graphic and specific questions. Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you ever want to have to do, did you ever, uh, uh, have any thoughts about doing this and that? Uh-huh. And the, the idea was, is to have these people confess all this to him. Uh-huh. And once they had confessed it to him, then he had them, had the control over them because he could hold this. Uh-huh. over their heads and threaten, you know, with exposure. If and they blackmail, in a sense. Uh, did he ever name any boys or men that you allegedly have had homosexual relations with, uh, no. Vic? No. Yet he either. charged you with uh, homosexuality. How did that stack up with the facts and with the truth, then? It didn't. Uh-huh. It didn't. It was just an ang- He He did, when, when, he, uh, when he stole my wife's affection... Uh, he spent months and months trying to convince me that I was socially sexually dysfunctional. Huh. And one of the things that he worked on the hardest is to is to is to convince me that I had homosexual tendencies. Huh. And 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 he did quite a number on me, Doctor Wade, because because there for a while I did not know what I was uh-huh. because he had built all these doubts into my mind. Uh-huh. I mean, I wasn't walking right. I wasn't I wasn't talking right. My gestures were not, you know, and he. he, he you know, when you when you have total confidence in this great man of God, and he starts questioning your sexuality, uh-huh. uh, it becomes a very serious matter. Uh-huh. And so uh, he's and able to, of, to make even the strongest person to doubt, make even the strongest. And and I and I cannot tell you, except for the grace of God, he did not break me. Uh-huh. But he could very well have, and I know a lot of people that confess to things like that simply just to stop that relentless harangue. Now you say he tries to make the marriages break up. You mean he encourages divorces? You oh mean? yes. Uh, and why does he do that? Again, again, as a matter of control, as a matter, as a matter of power, he he would boast to me often. You know, he would say about uh, John Colson, his associate pastor, who was my best friend, and. And, and Elaine calls me, he would just snap his fingers, you know, and say, well, I could get those two to, you know, to, to, to break up tomorrow if I wanted to. Huh. It's, it's a matter of power, it's a matter of, of and, and he, uh, and, and one of the things that was so very obvious with Jack Hiles is that he enjoyed flaunting this power. Uh-huh. Uh, he would, uh, he would, you know, the fact that, you know, uh, you know, I'm right here in the middle of this, of this, of this uh, great church, you know, and, and, but but I, I can snap my fingers and get these people to do anything. Uh-huh. A number of occasions when my marriage broke up, uh, he uh, he repeatedly told me, he said, Vic, if you ever need a woman for sex, let me know and I'll take care of it. What Where would he get these women? Did well, he, within the membership of his church. He knew of some that oh, would sure. cooperate? Oh, sure. How does that stack up with morality and decency on his part or any Christian's part? There was any, there was no decency. There was no morality. The only the only decency, the morality was 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 in 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 writing volumes and volumes of rules by which our children were governed in our schools and and and, and, and in their behavior. But it was all for for the, for public record to convince the whole world how virtuous and how pure we are. Uh-huh. And that has transcended itself into into his into his ministry. Uh, case in point. Uh, you know, at first it was soul winning, and then it became confrontational soul winning. Uh-huh. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, first it was uh, separation, you know, biblical separation. Then it became ecclesiastical separation. Then it became secondary separation. In other words, the, the, the number of rules were simply to convince that I am purer than, than my neighbor. And it was all for show and tell, and those rules, unfortunately, were enforced selectively. Uh, you say in the schools, have, have he's got a number of schools connected with his operation, does he? High school, oh, yes. grade school? Oh, yes, high school, a grade school, and a college. And a college. Has immorality been prevalent or rampant in either or any of those schools that he's uh, supposedly in charge of? Dr. Wade, I have, I have uh, uh, witnesses that have come to me. Uh, with, with horrible stories of, of, of school teachers uh, having sex with, with their students. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been told of, of homosexual liaison. I've been talked of lesbian relationship among faculty. I have, I have, I've ran the gamut. Is this in the school, uh, high school, all of grade them. school, college? All of, all of them. All of them. Hmm. So it's a, it's a cesspool of iniquity, you would say, uh, in a sense? <laughs> yes. Uh, and now getting back, you know, yes. getting back to our train of thought regarding the the pedophile behavior. Yes. Uh, we have re- adultery is already old stuff. Swapping husband and wives is already old stuff. Uh-huh. The Catholic priests do it. I mean, it's common. There's no, there's no shock to it. Uh-huh. Um, uh, homosexuality, lesbianism is already old stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, incest. Uh, Jack House has repeatedly said, you know, that that's the next wave of. Uh, of sexual immorality. He's forever barked about that. Uh-huh. I've got sermons that I could send you uh, copies of where he just just forever harangues about uh, uh-huh. uh, about uh, about incest. Uh-huh. Now you see we're into pedophile behavior because now we have we have produced young people under uh, that are the fruit of his ministry, and they've already ex- experimented with sex. They were experimented with drugs. They were experimented with with any kind of immorality. And, and and that depravity that 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 Paul talks about in Romans chapter one has reached the pedophile stage, mm-hmm. and I, for the life of me, do not understand what uh, 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 what psychological forces, except except uh, to say that it's demonic forces, mm-hmm. uh, that force these people into uh, into into molesting children, mm-hmm. uh, and unfortunately, though the problem is not just sexual stimulation, but but actually brutalizing and torturing these precious children. Huh. And this is so graphically uh, uh, described and testified uh, about in, in the documentary that you'll be getting in a few days. Uh-huh. Now, let me ask you this. If in the course of your investigations and so on, you uncover uh, factually improvable, for instance, incestuous relations on the part of Jack Hiles with any of his family members or... Uh, pedophile activity on uh, Jack Hiles part with some of these teenagers or young children and so on and so forth. Will you release that or will you shut up about it and keep quiet if you should find solid evidence in that? Uh, Dr. Wade, I, uh, I can answer the question in this way is that, uh, I believe, I believe in my heart, uh, we're commanded in the Bible to fight against the, uh, the, the, the rulers of the darkness. And we're in a spiritual battle, and uh-huh. uh, and uh, I I know that, that a lot of people have different hobby horses and different uh, you know issues that uh, uh, that people fight, and uh, and I respect uh, and I respect people for whatever causes that they have. Uh-huh. Uh, my own personal, and this is not what Jack Hiles did to me personally, and I want to make that a, a very clear. Uh-huh. Uh, when my wife divorced me, she really basically did me a great favor. Even though I never remarried, I'm still single. Uh-huh. I, 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 I have desired to remarry, but I have enjoyed the company of my children. Uh-huh. And I've enjoyed, you know, this moment, this time of healing. Uh-huh. And my book has been a very great healing process. It's a book of hope. It's given a lot of people hope that uh-huh. there is a life after, after a, a cultish kind of a uh, situation. Uh-huh. What, and, was, what year was that when she divorced you? Uh, she was 1986. 1986. And has she, so, has she uh, remarried at all? Uh, sir? She, she's not remarried either. No, either of you. All right, go ahead. So, so I. Uh, so you have been. Your I book have, has been a help yeah, to people. But I have. Uh, but I have. God has really laid it on my heart to reveal 
uh, the uh, the horrible, uh, immoral cesspool that exists in the highest echelons of fundamentalism. You don't get much encouragement, or do you, from lay people or from pastors, or, I get, or which? I get a lot of encouragement from uh, from from the from the wounded and the and the and the and the victims. Uh-huh. I live with them. I live with the children of the ministry that that had wrecks after wrecks in their lives, where children have have trashed uh, all faith in God and. And, uh, and uh-huh. families that have been devastated. Are you dealing with those people on, on a daily basis? Daily basis. Basis. Are you employed now or retired or uh, what? I, I, for the last six months, I, I worked for the six months. I've just been, uh, I've just been existing. Uh, uh-huh. uh, I, for the first time in my life, I, uh, I, I have not been employed the last six months. Uh, uh-huh. There's been so much going on. The, uh, the documentary in Michigan took an awful lot of my time. Uh-huh. You contributed and, to it, did you? Uh, extensively. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so what I uh, what I really have concluded that the uh, uh, you know the the polluted waters have a have a source or an origin. Uh-huh. There has to have, there is that one sewer line that that pollutes the stream. Uh, there's the, the source of uh, of the pollution that has inoculated uh, of you know the, the 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 width and the depth of of, of, of fundamentalism. Uh-huh. Uh, it originates in Hammond, Indiana. Uh-huh. And that and that Jack Hiles singularly is the most evil man uh that uh, that preys on uh, uh on, on on innocent victims. Uh-huh. And not only that, but replicates himself in the lives of, of pastors that come to pastor school and his uh, ministerial students that, that that come out of Hiles Anderson College. Uh-huh. How can you explain the the flock that goes to the pastor school for these last 30 years, as you've mentioned. What, how many total uh, arrive there? Is it increased, decreased, or about the same? For instance, this well, last school. I remember. I remember back in the heydays of the early 80s, where we would have uh, on again an average pastor school average attendance uh, would be as high as 8,000, possibly more delegates. Uh huh. And what do we have now? Well, uh, and you know, uh, you're talking to a man that knows how to how to get a true count because I was involved in all this almost on a weekly basis. Uh huh. Uh, and I have followed this very carefully, and uh, I can uh, I can attest to the fact that he is fortunate now to has to have two thousand delegates at pastor school. In uh, 1993, in that, that area, correct. 91, two and three. That is correct. And I can I can uh, two thousand or less. Time, I can show you how. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's all it's all a matter of public record. I mean, right. Not, uh, I mm-hmm. can't go to these things. To have some things. of the pastors seen through this uh, chicanery and evil from this? Uh, well, a lot have. Man. A lot have, but but the. But the group that I have had the most, the least support from, and and this is the one that I, uh, this is what I find totally incredible, Doctor Wade, is is that the men in leadership, uh, the Doctor Curtis Hudson, the Doctor Bob Gray's, the Bob Joneses, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the people of that stature, have all been strangely quiet. The Jerry Falwells, the uh, the Curtis Hudsons, uh, the people like uh, like uh, the Doctor E. L. Bynum. And the people that that, that that send the right periodicals, the people in uh, in uh, in some of the association, like the Conservative Baptists and the uh, and the uh, General Association and uh-huh. the Southwest Baptists. Now, 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 Brother Bynum, I believe, has had several articles, has he not, on the Hiles? I I think he has. Yeah. But, I, but I'm saying I have not been able to uh, communicate with these people. I see. And 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 they have been strangely, except except of course in Dr. Bynum's. Uh, is the exception, and, uh-huh. and of course, Dr. Sumner is the, is the great right. exception. Uh-huh. Uh, but other than that, except for reporting factually, um, you know, certain aspects of this whole scandal, uh-huh. there's been no concerted effort to take uh, Titus chapter one, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to heart and rebuke them sharply before all that uh-huh. others may be strengthened in the faith. That would be First Timothy five nineteen and twenty. Well, that that area. correct. Rebuke it's them sharply. Yeah. Rebuke them sharply, and also the elders that sin, uh, exactly. rebuke the, before all that others may fear. Uh, so you have both the Titus and the First Timothy five nineteen and following. That is correct. And now that, that's that's the one uh, that's the one admonition in the scriptures that has been totally neglected. 
The other one, of course, is is a matter of church discipline in First Corinthians chapter six or seven. Is mm-hmm. it? Uh, that chapter has been six, totally huh? neglected. Chapter five. That's wrong. That's right. Yeah, that has been totally neglected. And also, I maintain that one of the one of the most important uh, scriptures is that uh, is that uh, the commandment of scripture is not to have any fellowship with 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 with, uh, with fornicators. Mm-hmm. And, now, and also the, the whole the whole issue of separation. Uh-huh. Uh, it's being preached about that it's being preached as an ecclesiastical separation of somebody you know that uh, uh, preaches for somebody that's not it's not quite agreeable in doctrine uh-huh. should not be have any fellowship with yeah, but not uh, personal and uh, holiness uh, separation not, that's right uh-huh. and also for some reason everybody is concerned with men outside of the of the of the Baptist group. Uh, Name the people like uh, forever. Billy Graham is getting beat up, and uh-huh. uh, John MacArthur, and, uh-huh. and Chuck Swindoll, and I'm sure there are good bases right. for criticism of these men. But uh-huh. but these these uh, writers and these accusers of these men have disqualified themselves because they will not tackle the issue in their own camp. Why do you think that is, uh, Vic? Uh, one one reason, and that is again a scriptural reason, and that is that there is no fear of God. Uh-huh. Good, uh, it says, uh, the fear of man bringeth the a snare. The fear of God, uh-huh. and they're not, and they're, and they're fearful of man rather than be fearful of of, uh, of the one that will send the body and soul in hell. Uh-huh. How do you explain these people that are antagonistic towards you and others who name names and uh, expose sin and wickedness? Uh, you feel that you have biblical injunctions for this. Why are people against this? Why do they? rail against you and others uh, for this, well, do you think? Well, again, the one, th- the one thing that I have been most accused of is, is number one, is that uh, uh, is that uh, they've been all inoculated with this thought that you should not raise your hands against God's anointed. Uh-huh. And my answer is, scripturally, uh, uh, the, the whole book of Malachi was written by a layman. Uh-huh. And, and, the, and, and the whole book of Malachi... Uh, Pertaining to tithing and, and unfaithfulness and everything else was directed towards the 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 the, 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 the priesthood of uh-huh. the day. Uh-huh. So, in other words, if the if the ministers and the preachers themselves are not able to police themselves, I believe it is the responsibility of of godly and separated and concerned laymen and laity uh, to deal with this thing. Uh-huh. Uh, there's still the doctrine of the priesthood of the believer. Yes. And, and I don't see any distinction. In other words, if the preachers are too silly, or not silly, but scared and uh, and frightened of their own positions and jobs to expose evil, the layman, you feel, should rise up and do that. Of course. To keep the purity. And of the, problem, the problem here is that one little layman uh, stood up against the greatest man of the day, and since the days of J. Frank Norris and uh, and people like that, you know, the uh, the authority of the of the preacher has not been challenged by anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were they, they they have appointed themselves as men of God. They have appointed themselves as messengers of God, and we're to sit and listen and shut up and not and not not respond. Mm-hmm. And Malachi three sixteen commands us, you know, they that love the Lord spake often one to another, mm-hmm. and we are to communicate, and there has to be a dialogue. Uh-huh. And there has to be a discussion, and 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 there should be a a proving and a discussion of of the of the doctrines of the faith, uh-huh. and not for it to be a one one dimensional and one sided uh, a flow of information from the pulpit down to the laity. Uh-huh. Did not Matthew twenty three and the Lord Jesus excoriation of the hypocrites and the Pharisees uh, exemplify his attitude toward false? Religious leaders. Well, that the, the the whole issue of false religion, of false teachers, is mentioned in every book in the New Testament, uh-huh. from Matthew to Revelation. Uh-huh. And 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 when Jesus uh, in, in 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 Luke chapter ten or eleven somewhere in there, a whole mob of people came to the shore to see Jesus, uh-huh. and there were so many of them they actually stumbled over over each other. And what a time to have a big revival meeting. And Jesus turned to the disciples and said, "Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees." Uh-huh. He was more concerned for the separation and the purity of his disciples than he was for thousands of people that came to hear him preach. Uh-huh. And therein lies the problem: is that we, the soul winning, has taken precedence over over discipleship, uh-huh. and that we run him through the mill. And what is unfortunate in Hammond, and I, I've been there, I shook hands with tens of thousands of these people, 
And Dr. Wade, one of the one of the haunting fears that I have is that thousands and thousands of these people that came down the aisle of the First Baptist Church and took my hand and said they were saved will end up in hell because they were not given the plan of salvation properly. Hmm. What false plan were they given? It's a deluded gospel. What can you describe it to our listeners? I would be happy to. Uh, our, our plan of salvation was 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 a thirty second capsule, vitamin capsule, Romans three ten, Romans three twenty three, Romans six ten, and Romans ten thirteen. And you're, you're a sinner, yeah. If you're a sinner, you're uh, you're going to go to hell. But Jesus died for you. If you would say a little prayer, you're going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, are these the type of the thousands that he's claimed to be and these converted? are the thousands that he claimed to have to have led to, to, have, to have been saved what is his total count is it a, so much a year what's his total what is he saying now he's led to Christ do you remember I mean, by now it's in the, in the hundreds of thousands hundreds of thousands and you're wondering whether or not these people will be in hell well, because of the deluded gospel well that is again there. again dr. Wade if 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 uh, Jack House has been in Hammond for 30 years, mm -hmm. and he's had 20,000, 30,000, well, you know, he had 100,000, 100, he had more people in church allegedly one Sunday than the whole population of Hammond, Indiana. Uh -huh. He had several times that he claimed to have 100,000 people in church. Uh -huh. And my question is, where are they? Uh -huh. And the second question I have is, where are the churches? There should have been by now, in the Chicago area, several hundred some fundamental Baptist churches. Uh -huh. If even a fraction of these people, but I have even a more damaging uh, statistic than that, and that is this, uh, uh, in, 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 in one phase of the ministry, uh, the First Baptist Church has an average of about 100 deacons. Uh -huh. And the last one that I served on was in 1988, and uh -huh. I did a survey for Dr. Sumner. Uh-huh to determine what percentage of the deacon board after 20, what, 6, 27 years of his ministry in Hammond, what percentage of these deacons were home-bred converts uh -huh. of his ministry? People that have been won to the Lord, nurtured in the gospel, matured enough spiritually where they would qualify to become deacons of the First Baptist Church. Uh -huh. The percentage was less than 2%. Huh. Less than two percent. Yes. So most of them are from other ministries. Most most of the growth of the church in the sixties and seventies were people like me that were unhappy with the deadness and the dryness of of our churches uh, coast to coast, and, and saw something which was vibrant and alive and like like moth going to a light. We all immigrated from all over the country. To uh -huh. And most of the leaders today in the church are people that, that have come from anywhere. I see. That's sort of a Mecca. It's sort of a Mecca. Uh -huh. But but the product, the product is not there. If soul winning builds churches, uh, you know, we should have a, a, a huge number of people uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, that are serving the Lord today faithfully. Uh-huh. After 24 and a half years in the bus ministry, uh, driving a bus faithfully and bringing in anywhere from 200 to who knows how many uh, people over the years, I can claim uh, perhaps 15 or 20 people that are that are serving the Lord today. Out of all those hundreds? Out of all those years and years of bus ministry. Huh. It's a failure, Dr. Wade. The whole, the whole system has failed huh. tragically because we do not... First of all, in, in our soul winning, there's not a word about repentance. Huh. There's no there's no a word about about a change of direction where there have to be fruits of the spirit and and a changed life and whatever. Huh. It was just a constant, uh, you know, like a like a like a conveyor belt uh -huh. of people going out, coming in one end and and, and dropping off the other end. Uh -huh. And it's a damnable indictment on the whole ministry. Uh -huh. Now, what uh, progress has been made in this uh, deacon of Jack Hiles, who's been accused in the court and found guilty, I guess, of uh, pedophile activity of uh, some sort in the uh, school, uh, or in the college, in the church, I guess. Ballinger, this is, today is the 19th. The, the case has dragged on for two years. What's his name, the deacon? A.B. 
Two initials. A V Ballinger. B A L L. E N G E R. E N G E R. All right. That's a deacon. He used to be sentenced on a tw- on Thursday or Friday of this week. Mm-hmm. What was his charge again against him for our listeners that he, might not be up on? Uh, A V Ballinger was convicted, tried, and and found guilty of sexually molesting a six-year-old girl in the in, in the Sunday school department of First Baptist Church. Uh-huh. Uh, what is uh, Jack Isle's relation? Is, is he incensed against this terrible sin of molestation of children? Well, he publicly claims it to be a, a, a crime uh, worthy of, of, punish, of, of capital punishment, uh, but he has steadfastly pronounced uh, A.B. Ballinger not guilty and has demanded uh, that uh, cases like that be tried in the... Uh, uh, you know, among, by the membership of the church and not in the civil courts. How old was this young girl? Uh, six or seven years old. Six or seven years. And how old is uh, Ballinger? Uh, he's in his early 50s. Early 50s. Uh, now, I understand that there's, in this film, of the Detroit television studio, a particular church that is mentioned uh, repeatedly. What is that church? Uh Am I right in that, or am I wrong? Well, Dr. Wade, there are seven churches that 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 the investigators have discovered around I the see. country. Are there any that are the fruit of Jack Hiles' ministry? That they're all they're all all these seven churches are uh, were pastored or are being pastored uh, by by graduates of Hiles Anderson College. Huh. And the one in Michigan was an extremely brutal one because uh, the pastor... you say six or seven churches. Well, sir, About six or seven churches. That is correct. Okay, go ahead. The one in Michigan is, is a church called North Sharon Baptist Church in Chelsea, Michigan, which is right outside of Ann Arbor. Uh-huh. And it's pastored by uh, Bill Winninger, who's a graduate of Hiles Anderson College, and the associate pastor is Tim Leonards. And uh, on Thanksgiving, uh, I happen to be in Ann Arbor. My, my only brother lives uh, in Plymouth, Michigan, right outside of Ann Arbor, and uh-huh. I go to see him every Thanksgiving uh, for, for the family reunion. Uh-huh. And I walked into their house and found a stack of newspapers, Detroit Free Press and Detroit News, uh, with, with banner headlines uh, about a Baptist church in Chelsea where, where, the, where a deacon and associate pastor were indicted on a total of 30 counts of, of sodomizing children from age 3 to 10. Huh. And these are the fruit of Jack Hiles? These are the, this is the fruit of, of Jack Hiles' ministry. Uh, age 3 to 10? Yes. And there were 60-some cases investigated and 30 were, were charges were, were drawn against the uh, uh, the associate pastor Tim Leonards and and the deacon uh, uh, Mark Fowler the deacon's charges were so severe that that the man has been in jail without uh, held without bail since since before Thanksgiving of 1992 huh. and, and these are Leonard, depicted in this uh, uh, documentary yes uh-huh and, was and the pastor also involved, one girl? Well, the just... pastor is involved because uh, Pastor Stonewall of the investigation. Has he been charged with the pedophile no, the activity? Pastor has not been. Uh, but again, there there are, there are, there are cases that are being drawn, which which eventually I think are going to, uh, are going to draw the uh, the pastor. Uh, the problem with the uh, with the Ballinger case uh, is for them is that this is a criminal case, uh, which is uh, to to charge A.B. Ballinger with the actual crime. Uh, but there is another case that, that that's uh, that's going through the court simultaneously, and that's the civil case, in which the church and the pastor Jack Hiles and the deacon board are all being charged for negligence, and there is a large uh, monetary sum that is being you know uh, demanded by the parents of the of the little girl, uh-huh. and so similar cases uh, are are sure to to come out of this thing in Michigan also, which will drag the pastor into this whole situation. Uh-huh. What is Jack Hiles? Uh, attitude toward uh, the one a girl or Levin Leonard or well, Leonard or the, the deacon uh, Mark Fuller or Fowler, whatever his name is. Well, his attitude is very simple, Doctor Wade. It's, uh, it's it's disgusting, and it's and again, it's in the documentary uh-huh. uh, during the pastor school in March of 1993. All three men, well, the pastor and the associate pastor and and the deacon. Well, the deacon is in jail, so his wife came with uh-huh. the little children, and they were all given the Hiles. Freedom Award, which is an annual award given at pastor school for uh, for a pastor who has uh, basically faced the uh, onslaught of the uh, of the secular press or, or government, you know, against soul winning. Huh. And so these men were given uh, awards and applauded at pastor school for 
Uh, and of course, the delegates and the people were not told what the problem was. They were just uh, told that uh, these were soul winners trying to get little children saved, and, and Satan was trying to destroy, you know, the bus ministry. So he awarded these uh, evil people. He awarded people. these people the Heil Freedom Award. Well, uh, with in conjunction with David Gibbs. David Gibbs was the one with the Christian Law Association who was also a participant in the awards. Huh. Now, not only that, Dr. Wade, but I also have... Does David Gibbs know about all these all, crime molestations? Oh yes. oh, yes. And not only that, but uh, to give you how Jack Hiles feels about them, uh, there have been sermons preached around the country in which Dr. Hiles compares these three reprobates in Michigan uh, to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going oh, to the fire. My. Isn't that something? So that tells you of this massive, hysterical... Uh, the full page ads have been run. Uh, our news, local newspapers have been filled with letters, and there's been campaigns of telephone calls and intimidation, uh, basically uh, declaring to the whole world that these men are just trying to win souls and that they're being attacked by Satan and that uh, and that they're innocent. Huh. And the whole crescendo of uh, of, of this uh, public relations uh, kind of a. Uh, thing it's all orchestrated by Jack Hiles. Is it your belief and understanding <clears throat> from what you know about the Christian faith that Jack Hiles is redeemed, or do you feel that he's unredeemed and a and a like Antichrist, uh, an actor? Uh, Doctor Wade, I say it very advisedly, and this is coming from a man uh, that that saw him and watched him. Uh, for 30, uh, for nearly 30 years, I was with him countless hours. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the listeners make, uh, make, make the base, the final decision, but I will give you these facts that in those 30 years of, of intimate, intimate, uh, time spent with this man, I never one time that I recall, I never one time heard him say one word or never open the Bible and share a Bible truth with me. In all those years, I never, I will testify to that without any shadow of doubt, I had never one time in all my travels and all my time with him ever saw him witness to anybody about the Lord Jesus. Huh. In all that time, I never one time saw him, uh, you know, on his knees, uh, we say, Vic, I have a burden, let's pray about it. The only time I saw him pray was for the meal in the restaurant. Uh-huh. So, uh, so, privately, uh, you know, we talked about the, uh, about the baseball teams and about the football teams and uh-huh. the latest ethnic jokes and, 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 and levity and, and idle talk. But in all those years, I have never one time, uh, prayed with him unless I had a specific prayer that I asked him to pray for something regarding, you know, my family or my own personal needs or whatever. Uh-huh. He's not a spiritual man, and he does not manifest privately any fruits of the Spirit. Uh-huh. And my own personal assessment of the man is is that he is the ultimate deception of Satan. Uh-huh. A man that was brought on the scene as the champion of fundamentalism and soul winning and separation and standards and, 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 and defender of the King James Bible and all the other good things that we hold dear uh-huh. in our lives. And he assumed the position of a Baptist minister, uh, which is a mainline, uh, quote, Protestant denomination. Uh-huh. Uh, which is which is basically associated with the uh, with the uh, uh, fundamental or the uh, conservative or the biblical uh, 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 standards of, uh, of what denominations are today. Uh-huh. And he preached enough truth and enough of the uh, of the uh, symbols of, uh, of of true Christianity to make himself credible. And came on as the savior of the world and savior of America, and he was going to build the largest churches in America and help step and stem the tide of communism and, and, and whatever. And in the process of doing that, he has corrupted and, in, and, and injected into the, into the bloodstream of fundamentalism, uh, a virus to me that's deadlier than the AIDS virus. 
Uh -huh. So I, I look at him as being the ultimate deception of Satan. Uh -huh. Which tells me that these are the last days where even the elect, even the even the theologians or the Bible uh, believing, uh, you know, preachers uh, and layman preachers, uh, uh, were hooked right into this thing. Uh -huh. And one of the most incredible thing to me is is that the big the big shots in denominations and in and our Baptist circles uh, to this day will not face with with the reality of what's happening. Have any of the uh, Baptist groups or leaders uh, have been willing to write editorials and publicize uh, Jack Hiles foibles and uh, no sir evils? I uh, the only magazine the only magazine that that published it extensively was the biblical evangelist uh -huh. and uh, and I appreciate you reminding me that Dr. E. L. Bynum did write uh, an article or two uh-huh uh, uh, but uh, other uh, than that, have you had any call you any leaders for instance now you're a member of a what kind of a baptist church are you going to now i go to a uh, i go to bethel baptist church in maryville indiana which is a grb church mm -hmm. maryville indiana yes uh-huh at grb your father was connected with uh, my, uh, my father was a uh, was a native ukrainian uh, missionary to the to the ukrainians under baptist mid missions mm -hmm. are and, you ukrainian uh, ukrainian by uh, by yes, birth I am, uh, that's my nationality, nationality. We're, 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 we're ukrainian by nationality i see and I, uh, so I'm you're sure familiar, he's under Baptist, it. Baptist Mission. What'd you say? Uh, you know, the eastern, uh, uh, states, New Jersey and Pennsylvania has a rather, a uh, number of, of, of Ukrainian Baptist uh -huh. churches, uh, with which my dad was, uh, was associated. I see. Ha have you found any uh, interest in helping you to publicize this terrible, horrendous thing on the part of any of the GARB leaders, regular no. Baptist leaders? No. Nobody, uh, nobody. Paul Tassel or any of the people? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. I've talked to many of them personally, and uh, uh, there's never been any opportunity for me to, or for, for Royal Glover, my attorney friend who uh -huh. published a book uh, alongside of mine. Uh, nobody was willing to take ads for the for the uh, for the book, and nobody has reviewed them. Oh, uh, you you one, asked for there was you. one uh, GERB uh, associational paper in, uh, in in Minnesota that carried just a one paragraph little. Uh, Book review of uh -huh. my book, but other than that, nobody uh, nobody uh, would touch it with a ten foot pole. Uh -huh. None of the Christian book publishers would uh, would publish the book because it was too controversial. So uh -huh. I had to publish it under uh, under you know private uh, private, uh, private name. Way. Well, there's been no, uh, there's only one. Uh, there, uh, in this issue has been uh, on the national spotlight since 1986, basically when I went before the Deacon Board. Uh -huh. And uh, to this day, uh, I've had only two invitations to come to speak to any group uh, uh, around the country. Uh, uh, the preachers are very, very gun shy. They, 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 they won't have anything to do with me. What were those two invitations, if you might? Uh, the one, uh, the one was to uh, uh, by Dr. Greg Dixon in Indianapolis uh -huh. to, the, uh, uh, to his uh, group uh, organization called the uh, I think the Unregistered Churches uh, uh -huh. Coalition. I think that's the tapes that I heard from you there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, and, I, and I also received a uh, a church uh, an invitation to speak uh, to a church in uh, in Columbus, Ohio, uh, uh -huh. which uh, which also is uh, in some fashion associated with this movement. I see. Uh, but other than that, uh, I have written countless letters, countless uh -huh. letters. For many years, I would write to the pastors of the churches where Jack Hiles preached and uh, uh -huh. and warn them, basically, you know, to to. Uh, uh, to take Matthew 18 literally and, and get measured for a millstone because they might be hanging one uh, around <laughs> their necks. Uh -huh. And uh, and Dr. Wade, it's been it's been uh, like like uh, like throwing uh, uh, rocks into a, into a hollow uh, of well. Uh -huh. Nothing ever came back. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the, the preachers are basically I I sense very very gun shy and and and, and stay away, away from me. Uh -huh. And uh, and I realize that that I have basically you know challenged the authority of the ministry and, and I can understand that. Uh -huh. uh, and you're I, not in, uh, at war with all ministers of every stripe and kind. No, no. That's your charge against you. Is that what they're trying to say? Some of them. Well, uh, they they're basically the the basic tone of the replies that I that I get. Is that you know they they uh, they nitpick at something you know, and I say well this doesn't sound true and how can we believe uh, everything else you say and uh -huh. my my basic answer has been is that I am not trying to convince anybody uh -huh. I'm not trying to, to to win a popularity contest my my issue and my whole uh, 
uh, effort is to expose Jack Hines. Uh-huh. Because I consider him to be the source of all this pollution. Uh-huh. And again, may I say for the record, it has nothing to do what he's done to me. Uh-huh. I escaped from it, and I could have very happily just, just moved away and lived, lived uh, in, in total obscurity. Uh-huh. I have two children that love the Lord. I have their trust and their confidence. May I say also for the record that, that my wife has totally, totally severed all contact with my children. Is that right? And she has not had contact with them going on four years. I mean, uh-huh. none whatsoever. She will not respond to letters and to Christmas gifts and to Mother's Day gifts or anything. So, uh, uh-huh. uh, so that gives you some idea as to, as to the depravity of the whole situation. It certainly is depravity. Now, we're coming up to an hour and 51 minutes in your discussion and interview. Uh, Brother Nistrick, I certainly appreciate this uh, very lengthy time that you shared with our listeners on the taped interview, and we have your permission to spread this far and wide as as we see fit. have my permission to spread it as wide as possible, and uh, the only thing that I want to say uh, for the record, and this is very important for me, is that, Dr. Wade, I am not out bashing preachers. Good. I am not out to try to destroy fundamentalism. Uh-huh. Fundamentalism is self-destructing. And this matter, it's a, it's a spiritual battle. And, and uh, my Bible says in Hebrews uh, that those that sin willfully will incur the fiery wrath of a righteous God. Uh-huh. And my ministry is found in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, where it says that we are to warn the believers. Uh-huh. And that I don't want the blood of people that, that would claim to be ignorant. Uh, we are commanded to warn the believers, not just the unsaved, but the believers, uh-huh. of any false doctrine, of any false uh, misconception that, that has been permeated. Uh-huh. Uh, and, that my, and, and that my argument is that unless, unless the body of Christ and our Baptist believers as a group wake up and deal with the issue in their own camp. Uh, you can you can write an epithet to fundamentalism. Uh-huh. It's dead. Uh-huh. And I don't want it to die. No. And I love the Lord and I and I wait for his coming and what this has taught me more than anything else is in the absence of support from the brethren that I thought I would get, I, I have learned really to trust my Lord. Even more love him. And I and I in the scriptures uh, constantly, uh, I uh, uh, I still uh, I still adhere and uh, and study my Bible faithfully, and it's an old uh, uh, Ryrie study Bible in King James, and uh-huh. I and I will and I will stay with it to, uh, till I die. Of course, uh-huh. I use other commentaries and sure. whatever. And my faith is is very sound, uh-huh. and I'm not a bitter man, but I see the body of Christ, uh, you know, in in, in dire straits. Uh-huh. And I see, and I see immorality in the pulpits coast to coast, and I see uh, uh, Christians being destroyed. I see little children having their moms and dads divorce each other. I see families being shredded, and 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 all I can do is just do whatever I can to sound a warning uh, uh-huh. to the believers. And what? That's the mission. I appreciate this interview, of Brother Vic Nistrick from Munster, Indiana. Uh, Maybe you can come to the Independent Baptist Fellowship meeting that's, uh, I'm sure you've perhaps heard of it, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, it's, well, excuse me, the Dean Burgheim Society, Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. That's July 21st and 22nd. Uh, uh, I'll send you some materials on that. Oh, Maybe I would be very happy. Uh, that's uh, in defense of traditional Bible texts, but it's, uh, I think it might be of interest in fellowship. What title or titles would you think would be appropriate for this interview? Can you give me two or three punchy titles that you think would attract interest so that we could spread it far and wide in our readership? Well, uh, you're, you're uh, basically, you're talking to a man who was on the inside. Right. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not just, uh, did, did some research. Right. Inside uh, man. I was I was in on the inner inner sanctum of the uh, of the inner sanctum of the of the operation here in Hammond. Uh huh. Um, so uh, so I think I think it's a story of uh, uh, you cannot uh, you have to stress the, the cultishness of the system. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We have to stress the fact that that the only people that can truly assess 
a situation like that are people that have been in it and come out of it uh-huh. with their with their sanity and with their spirituality intact. And I and I give praise to to, to my heavenly Father for 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 having sustained me and and kept me spiritually alive and has restored my uh, my, uh, my my spiritual balance. Uh huh. So it's basically an insider story of a of a uh, of a monstrous cult. Uh-huh. Insider story of a monstrous cult. And well, that's a good title. And uh, of course, and of course, the title of my book uh, is, is probably as, as, as descriptive as anything as to uh, uh, the title. Of course, came from uh, from the little uh, children's book, The Wizard of Oz. Uh huh. Which is basically, uh, you know, smoke and mirrors. Yes, smoke and mirrors, and that's where we have. And that's what we have. Is there anything else you'd like to say very hurriedly no. before we bring this to a Just conclusion? I appreciate you talking to you, brother. And, well, I uh, certainly am glad for this. And, uh, yeah. all, if, if we can salvage a few lives out of this thing, uh, I think I think God will be pleased with that. Yes, well, and, we certainly... Uh, and that's, and that's the whole intent. It's not it's not a, an exercise in, in hurting the body of Christ. It's, uh-huh. it's an exercise in trying to restore a body of Christ to spiritual health. Well, that's a very commendable thing. We'll do all we can in the Bible for today to further that cause. And we look forward to the documentary that you're going to be sending. And also, I know our listeners will look forward to listening to this interview. I appreciate your willingness. It's now 11.07 p.m. here on the 19th of June, Saturday evening, 1993. And uh, this is Dr. D.A. Waite, uh, Director of the Bible for today at 900 Park Avenue, Collingswood, New Jersey. And uh, speaking to Brother Vic Nischik of Munster, Indiana. Thank you very much, Brother Vic, and we'll sign off. Uh, Let me just uh, stop the tape, and then we'll say goodbye personally.